Um, so when they came to Salt Lake, they had their first daughter together and continued having children. And Susan actually had 13 children, which is just incredible. But five of her children passed away. In fact, both of her children with her first husband passed away. So not only did she lose her husband, but she lost both of her little boys. Hi everybody, welcome to another week of Mix It Up, Black History and the Restoration, where we normally mix up the restoration while we mix up a recipe and learn about early black members of the church. But this week has been a little insane and emotional and just heavy and all of those things. And so the recipe just didn't happen this week. I marinated some chicken, threw it on the grill and called it a day. Um, so I will share with you the marinade in the video description. It's delicious and super easy and um, share this story with you. It has been a challenging week in the United States for various um, reasons in regards to race. And um, when I started doing Mix It Up Black History and the Restoration, I wanted to keep it lighthearted and um, a big part of what I wanted to share was to simply share stories of early black members of the church um, so, that I, so that you didn't feel like I had to tell you what to think or how to feel, but just share stories. And I believe as we share stories and we relate to each other, that is when we begin to establish empathy and connection and understanding. And so I have seen many comments this week, as I'm sure you have on social media and other places, um, some hurtful, some not, some that seem to suggest that we still have so much work to do to understanding each other and where each person is coming from in various different circumstances. And so I just want to share with you that that is my goal for Mix It Up, is that we can learn stories, we can learn the history, we can work to not repeat that, and also to love and support those who are still experiencing um, trials that are related to racism and the heaviness that that causes. And so I just want you all to know that um, while I am so grateful for the progress that our country has made from the time that these pioneers lived till now, um, there have still been things that have been hurtful to me. Um, and there are moments where it's hard to know your own worth when people suggest that you have none <laughs> based on what you look like or that you are only invited to participate in things or be a member of things or um, that your voice is only important because of your race and, and that people don't care what you say, but because they're trying to be more inclusive of a diverse population, suddenly they do. And so there is just so many feelings to that, but I want to thank each and every one of you that are supportive and reach out and are willing to learn and listen because um, you guys brighten my heart and just make this all the effort totally, totally worth it. And so I really, really appreciate each and every one of you and I'm grateful you're here on Mix It Up week after week. This week we are gonna talk about Susan Reed Legrone. You'll remember that she was Ned's second wife. So Ned was last week. We talked about how they were born in Mississippi as slaves and they came to Utah before becoming members of the church with Ned's sister Amanda and her husband. And after living in Salt Lake for a couple of years, they were baptized, their children were baptized. Um, but you'll remember that both of them had lost a spouse before they met each other. So Ned lost his wife Florida and Susan lost her husband. And Ned had a son named Henry and uh, Susan had two boys with her first husband. Um, so when they came to Salt Lake, they had their first daughter together and continued having children. And Susan actually had 13 children, which is just incredible. But five of her children passed away. In fact, both of her children with her first husband passed away. So not only did she lose her husband, but she lost both of her little boys. And she lost her son, George, at the age of six. She lost her daughter, Lydia, at the age of two, and her son, David, at the age of eight. 
and um, so she was only able to raise eight of her 13 children into adulthood. Um, I also accidentally lied to you last week. Um, I said that they weren't able to do all of their family history work when they went to the endowment house in September um, 1875, but um, Susan was able to do Florida's um, temple work, which was Ned's first wife, and Ned was able to do the temple work for Susan's first husband. Susan was also able to do the work for her deceased first mother-in-law of that first husband. And she was able to do um, the work for her mother, Margaret. So um, I think it's amazing that they were able to accomplish that work, um, even in a time when the temple eventually became closed to members that were black, that they were able to complete that really sacred and important work. And then we'll remember last week from Ned's story that they moved to Idaho. They settled in Milo, Idaho, and they stayed active members of the church. Um, but one of their sons was never baptized, so we don't know if that was his personal choice or if they had started to somewhat distance themselves from the church. But there is no record saying they ever left, and their funerals did... Um, include members of the LDS faith and suggested their faithfulness. Susan's grandchildren describe her as a nice and quiet grandmother. Um, they knew that she had been a slave, but when the topic came up of the time that she lived in the South, she, like her husband Ned, would quickly brush it under the rug and um, not tell them about it. She would just say, I want to forget because it had been horrible. Susan lived until December 11th, 1928 and passed away two years after her sweet husband, Ned, which made her a widow twice in her life. She was in Idaho Falls at the time of her passing and her passing was covered in the Salt Lake Tribune and other records such as the Times Register. It said that um, the late Ned Legrone was well-known colored man of Idaho Falls. She and her husband were always held in high regard. She was buried next to her son and Ned's son, David, in small Milo, Idaho Cemetery, which is now lush, rich farmland covered in the beautiful, majestic trees that she and Ned planted. That is the story of Susan Reed Legrone. Thank you so much for coming to Mix It Up, Black History and the Restoration this week. Next week, we'll be back to just telling stories. We're gonna tell the story of Henry, which is Ned and Florida's son, her, um, Ned's first wife. And um, we're gonna hear about his story and his um, faith and testimony while we really do mix up a recipe next week. Thank you so much for coming. I'm Taylor Ricks and I will see you next time. Goodbye.